Community Studies program is a two-year diploma program. Um, what are the age groups or target audiences? It's for anybody um, that wants to take Inuit studies. Um, it can be anybody, it, they can be elders, they can be young people that just finished high school. Uh, as long as they um, meet the entrance requirements, they have to be able to talk in Inuit because 99% uh, of the courses are in Inuktitut. Uh, we do have a student who does speak very limited Inuktitut, but he understands a lot of Inuktitut. He just has a, he, he just stopped talking in, in Inuktitut, but with prompts he's able to uh, do it in Inuktitut. In year one, um, there, there are basic language courses uh, as well as um, courses about Inuit cultures that we just learn about in school now, just, such as uh, Inuit cosmology and shamanism was just taught last month. Uh, we all know that we don't really use shamanism anymore, although we believe that um, there are shamans, but they have gone underground. So, uh, and a lot of us, even up to my age group, we do not know very much about shaman, shamanism anymore. The shamanism that was a big part of Inuit, Inuit culture has been done away with by missionaries. Um, So, uh, in the 1990s, the program got funding to interview elders from different parts of Nunavut. And one year they decided to interview elders about shamanism. So they created a, a book all about shamanism, and that's the book we use in our course. Um, that's just an example. Uh, right now, the Inuit Studies students are doing uh, drafting patterns and skin sewing. So, uh, again, there's a big difference in age groups. There are some really young ones who just recently finished grade 12. And then we have older students who are in their 50s. So in between, in between that age group. Uh, in this course, the younger ones have never really sewn um, skins, even the, the inside part. So, and on the other hand, we have people that are master sewers. So there's a big range of skills, even in just one, yeah. one class. So that's the course that's on right now. They're learning how to make patterns, traditional patterns as well as modern, um, and then sewing. Uh, right now, they're starting with slippers, sealskin slippers, and they're going to make something else after they've finished the slippers. So they're learning how to make uh, patterns that will fit them. Um, we're trying to get away from small, large, me small, medium, large, yeah. extra large kind of way, which is very generic. Um, so part of the course is to uh, measure up to each student in aim using traditional measuring skills with hands, hands bands and other things like that. The course is taught this year in first year are phonology and morphology of Inuktitut, uh, professional development, uh, translation methods. Right now they're doing computer technology. And the next course they do before Christmas is legal, legal one. There's five legal t modules. And uh, in second year, as second semester, they're going to take medical 
medical one. So they, there's five uh, legal modules, legal one, two, three, four, five. And we also have medical modules one to five, where they concentrate on learning terminology and translation um, for learning medical terms in Inuktitut. Um, then they also have a course called Simultaneous Translation One, where they learn to, where they learn, oh, sorry, I'm on the wrong, wrong year, sorry. After Christmas, they're taking Inuit art history, uh, music of the Inuit, language in Inuit society, methods of social control and traditional activity where they do uh, something hands-on. Uh, for traditional activity, the very last course after uh, in the winter semester is making small tools, you know, maybe ulu, hunga, uh, or panna. So those are the courses for this year. The last few years, we've been getting younger and younger students who have never even heard about our ancestors and how they lived. They have a bit of, little bit of knowledge. They've heard a little bit, but not in depth. So the courses that they take um, teaches them about our Inuit culture and language. Um, at the end of the two years, uh, their knowledge of Inuit culture, Inuit language and culture uh, grows considerably. And it is one of our more um, popular programs. They're always very excited to learn about traditional Inuit culture as well as today's culture because we don't just dwell on traditional older information. Uh, we try to make everything that they learn relevant to today. Uh, the challenges are now young, young, younger students not speaking Inuktitut very well. Um, their level of Inuktitut is weaker, and the challenge, that, that's usually the main challenge. Is that so, the course, because the courses are taught in Inuktitut. Yes. Every single one of my students in this course that I'm teaching has a different dialect. I have nine students at the moment. They're, from, they're all from a different community. So we discuss a lot of our uh, terminology in different dialects. Um, the example uh, that we used the other day was uh, terminology about family, uh, what does relations mean in your dialect, what does family mean in your dialect, what are parents, what are siblings, such as things. Uh, we didn't finish because we didn't get very far, but even in that, um, because family is such a strong cultural strength of our culture, uh, we have very intimate um, attachment to our dialects. So we we have to respect each other's dialects. Inuktitut is all one language, but we have such different dialects where sometimes a word can have more than one meaning. Mm -hmm. So we try to be respectful. We try to um, know what a word can mean in another dialect so that when they become um, when they have graduated, they'll have learned a lot more different dialects than they did when they came. We're ago. using textbooks that were published in our programs uh, in interviewing elders. Uh, we're using a lot of our uh, grammar books that were made in the 90s. They really need to be updated, but the, at least we have some that we can refer to. We really need to update them. Um, such things on uh, financial terms, environmental terms, climate change terms, um, elder terms, government terms, and not all those grammar books that are from different 
topics. So uh, those help a lot because when you have many different dialects, you kind of have to refer to such books. Some are written in South Baffin dialect. A lot have been written in North Baffin dialect, which is closest to all dialects. But it is very dependent on who the author is. Uh, I see it in our language classes because we have had students even this fall who get angry because they don't have an instructor from their home community and they're demanding that they get an instructor from their home community. Um, luckily those are far and few like uh, apart so but we deal with things when they do come here and come and say we just tell them look at how much you'll have more knowledge of other dialects mm -hmm. than when you came so sometimes yes, we have to deal with that yeah. <laughs> indigenous education is any education that comes from indigenous people's cultures and language that is authentic rather than just translated. It's very important because it is our cultural language. It is part of our identity. Uh, it saddens me that in major areas such as Akhaluit, children don't speak it anymore. Um, it's, us, it's up to us as parents to keep it alive, not the schools. But the schools can certainly help. They can be a big part of our um, education, but it sh we shouldn't leave it up to the schools to teach our children our native language. Mm -hmm. That it's really important to maintain, to keep it alive, uh, to speak it as much as possible, and not to mix the two languages so much. Because it, when we start doing that, we weaken our language by using Kalunatituk words uh, while speaking in Inutitu. To me, that's a very quick way of weakening our language because it's so easy to speak in English. It's so easy to just revert to English when you're speaking, even to each other in, in, as Inuit. Mm -hmm. Indigenous education is really important because I'm from an age where, when schools first started, everything that we learned about was from the South and written from Southern people's uh, culture, which were often very opposite from our Inuit culture or indigenous culture. Um, I'll give you an example. I've, I've taught children for many, many years. And when I was teaching science, uh, one of the concepts when you're teaching grade one is living and non-living things. Mm -hmm. And they give examples of uh, a cup is a non-living thing, a plant is a living thing. And then there would be examples of rocks being non-living things. But in our culture, rocks are living things. Rivers are living things or creeks, but they're not considered living things in the textbook. So there would be little um, periods where I would omit them because I'd rather teach them. I would rather not mention those as non-living uh, to little children. So indigenous education is very important because the stories, the content of our edu indigenous education comes from our holistic uh, beliefs. Uh, it's really important because what we believe, what we say, is just as important as anybody else. That indigenous education be part of mainstream education, not just as an add-on, but a bigger part of our education system, uh, education curricula, um, resources, videos, books, posters, anything that comes from the indigenous people. Um, 
for example, uh, when high school students have to dissect animals, uh, that they can dissect animals from up here, such as fish or ptarmigan or bird or whatever that somebody caught, rather than ordering frogs from some store down south, as some teachers have done, because they, they were so used to doing that when they taught in the south, they just automatically thought, okay, we'll order frogs. <laughs> I would not want to touch a frog. It's a yucky thing, because I'm not used to it. But um, I've taught with uh, high school teachers who are non-Inuit that instead of using frogs, um, they went termigan hunting and used termigan yeah. to teach biology and dissect birds. So mm -hmm. to me, that's an indigenous education, a part of indigenous education. Um, indigenous education also validates um, our indigenous beliefs about ourselves, about our world, uh, about the animals, about the ocean, and whatever our world consists of, as well as our spiritual beliefs. So it is very important, and I hope to see it a lot more within the next 10 years. Okay. That Inuit Studies program expand. Right now it's a two-year diploma yeah. program. Um, it would be really good to see it as a degree, part of a degree program mm -hmm. in the future. And that the funders, the student funders see it as a valuable program. Mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes the funders say, what kind of job does it lead to? Is it a training program? And sometimes they have in the past been reluctant to fund students because it doesn't necessarily lead to a job. Mm -hmm. Although it can be, this program can be a big part of any job because they will have a lot more knowledge about Inuit culture and language having gone through it.